Today's question comes from Drag and Drop Records. What a great name. Uh, how do I, how can I move all my songs safely to a new external drive? Let's go through that. It's actually a lot simpler than I think a lot of people think, but there's a couple of things to keep in mind, as we can see in the comments, talking about saving external media in the song folder. What is that all about? Let's find out. Okay, so I have two folders open here. Two. These are two different hard drives connected to my machine. Um, let's open up a song first, and let's go through it. So let's open up. Let's go with Fighter. I have so many versions of Fighter. Let's do uh, this one. So I'm opening up this song from this hard drive. It says my sample rate's not right. That's fine. Okay. Um, so make some changes. We'll, we'll let's save as. Let's make a new one. We'll call this Fighter. Move me, please. All right. So the first thing to keep in mind is everything. The ways to, and I did a video on this recently. If you haven't seen it, that's where this question came from on how file management works in Studio One. But the way it works is there's a couple of components. First, when you create a new song, so if you come to the start page and you make a brand new song, you can choose where that song is going to live. So if I make new song, um, whoops, hang on, I just I jumped through that so fast. Um, if I come in and I say new song, you can see right here there's a default location that Studio One pulls in, but I can change this to whatever I want. If I click this, it lets me just go to any folder on any anywhere on my computer or on any hard drive connected to the computer. Mine defaults to volumes, this one terabyte gray, it's a gray colored hard drive, in a Studio One folder that I created. That default is a setting that you can change. So if I come into locations and preferences, user data location, this is where songs, projects, shows, presets, etc., are saved by default. That actually, can be is it defaults to this, which is just under my user, under document studio one. That's where all my default location for songs, projects, shows, and presets go. So specifically like presets, if I save a preset, it goes there. That's handy because if I save these on an external drive, for example, presets specifically, and I stop using that drive or I replace that drive with another drive, my presets are gone and my, they won't be there anymore. I've had that problem happen before. I believe I did a video about that. So this defaults to here, which I just leave as my like internal folder on this machine, so it's never gonna go away, never gonna change. However, when you go to create a new song, and I actually didn't know this until recently, the whatever the selection you select here, I believe that stays. So I select the Studio One folder slash songs, on this external hard drive as the location, and that's kind of the default here. I didn't know that that defaulted to that, which is pretty handy. I can change it. Let's, say, let's change it to a different hard drive, to the blue drive, and I say OK. If I cancel and hit New Song, what happens? Oh, interesting. So it might be saved per... I honestly don't know. This might be saved per template, perhaps? Ah, it is. It changes depending on what template you use. That's super interesting. Um, so this template is actually, this mastering template actually goes into this folder, which is good because I use this template for a lot of critiques that I don't necessarily want to be on my external drive. Um, so that, I believe that may be saved with, I could be wrong about that, don't hold me to it, but either way, it doesn't really matter. What matters is you can select where they go here, okay? All right, now, that's the first piece. Now when it goes, when you create a song in that folder, what does it create? Uh, let's look in this folder right here. It creates a song file, which I have a bunch of different song files because I've made lots of versions of this. It has folders for things like your mix downs, your master, your history, your bounces, and your media. Media is where all the audio files go. If we open that one up, we'll see a whole crap load of audio files associated with this song. Now, here's what matters. There's a, there's a setting under the locations user data type that says ask to copy external files when saving the document. I recommend this stays on. I don't know if it's on by default, so open up Studio One, make sure this is checked. What happens is when I drag in any new sound, whether it's off of a hard drive, um, a different hard drive, my system drive, my downloads folder, when I drag in any new piece of audio, when I hit save, it's going to pop up and say, do you want to copy this audio over? So do you want to copy it out of your downloads folder and copy it into the media folder for this song? For me, in the way that I work, the answer to that is always yes. There are occasions where I could see maybe you don't want to do that, where you're pulling it from a hard drive of samples and you just want to reference that drive and that folder without copying those files. Maybe use that same kick sample over and over and you just want to reference that same file versus copying it to every single song. The, if, you, if you're doing something like that, then questions like this are not 
of concern to you because you already have a better understanding of file management anyway. Uh, but for the rest of us, the answer is, okay, I, I got a new hard drive. I want to move this fighter song to a new folder. How do I do that? As with most good pieces of software, there are multiple ways to do it. The easiest way is actually not to use Studio One at all. So where is that song? Let's go back up. Here it is. It's fighter move me, please. I don't want to just move this because this is just a data file that references other media. So this file is referencing this media folder, for example. So it all goes together. That's why it's all in a folder that Studio One creates with the original title of the song, which is Fighter. If I want this song on the new drive over here, here's what you do. You navigate to the whole file folder, and then, whoop, <laughs> it disappeared. Why did it disappear? Okay. And then you just copy it over. That's literally all that you have to do. That's an eight gigabyte file, so I'm not going to copy it. And then once it's copied over, you open the file from that folder. So you go over it. Let's just, uh, for giggles, actually, never mind. Let me, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and copy it so I can show you this real quick. Okay, it's copied over. So now if I open this folder in the new hard drive and I choose to open this Fighter Move Me Please song, double click, open, guess what? Ta da! It opens and everything works fine. Wonderful. Here's the one tricky thing that could get you hung up. If I save this and close it, you'll notice in your recent files list, you got two copies. What does that mean? If you're not careful, you'll be opening it from two different locations. Um, so this first one, this first one here, if we just hover over it, it tells us the location. So Studio One's going to make this as easy as possible. It says it's in the new hard drive, the two terabyte blue drive versus this one that was in the one terabyte gray drive. So depending if you ever, if you're just backing it up, you might want to delete one or both of these. If you're going to keep working on it in the new drive, then it makes sense to remove it from here just so you're not opening it on the old drive, making changes, and then thinking it's on the new drive. This is a part of just like you got to kind of manage your files well. It's up to you to manage things well. Um, if you move it completely, if I didn't copy it but I moved it, then when I click on this, it'll just say file not found, which I guess no harm, no foul. Um, but what you could do here is you could go, um, let's see, right click on this. Gives me lots of options, but the one at the very bottom says remove from recent files list. And now it's gone. So now the only fighter move me please song is on the correct drive. That's the one thing to keep in mind. Now there are other ways to do this. You could open this up and you could go to um, something like file, save to new folder. It's basically just creating a new folder wherever you designate. Um, that's fine. There may be reasons to do that. For example, if I save this and I went, eh, that's getting more advanced. I'm not going to go into that. If I wanted to save it without all the underlying stuff. One of the reasons this file is so big is because all the takes from all the drum takes that we did. So we did probably four or five takes of drums. They're all in here in layers and playlists underneath the existing drums. So if I wanted to really clean this up and make it a lot smaller, I could go through, delete all of those extra takes, those extra playlists. So for example, on my drums, if I go to here on the drums and I go to layers, okay, never mind. They aren't there. So there's some, there's there's a bunch of layers of something somewhere making this file bigger that I just over the years haven't deleted. Um, so in that instance, maybe delete all of those, and then you can just say song remove unused audio or remove unused files, and then it'll delete everything you just removed from the song. Um, or another way is people like to do that, and then you save to new folder. It only copies over the active files that you have associated with this it gets a little complicated. For me, the easiest thing is to do what we did. Just copy the files here. So old hard drive here, new hard drive here. Just copy them all over and then close the old hard drive. And then what I would do from that point is make it a habit for the next few weeks or so. Instead of opening the files from your start menu or going through and like literally like making sure you're clicking everything from the right spot, what I'd probably do is just open the files directly from the folder. So go find the file that you want and open it from here. That way, eventually, after about a month or so, depending on how much you use Studio One, your list of recent files will be accurate and will be pointing to the correct folder. Um, otherwise, I guess you could come in here and do a bunch of management here, or you could get rid of your entire recent files list, then just open them from within your, your file browser of choice, or I guess you could open it from here, which will open up your default folder. Like I said, there's lots of ways to do it, but that's, that's the simplest and easiest way to make sure everything associated with the song gets copied over. I uh, hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for the question. If you have questions about stuff like this, uh, leave them in the comments. I check them about once a month to see if there are any recent questions that warrant a video. So leave those comments, and I'll see you in the next one.